Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to How to Win at Chess. This is a series where I play against my Twitch subscribers. I go up the rating ladder in 10 minute games and you learn stuff and uh, we have a great time. It's been a while since we recorded an episode. That's because it's kind of hard to sit down here for two hours and just play straight games. But uh, that's what we're doing on this fine Sunday afternoon. Quick announcement. During this video, we're also launching the Black Friday sale. So for the next five days and like 20 hours, uh, every course on my website is 40% off. No code. You can just click the link in the description. A lot of you also like don't know I have courses. I get a lot of these questions on, on Twitch sometimes, like where's your paid content? There's a website. Without further ado, uh, let's get into the games. Uh, our first opponent actually spelled their name wrong when they applied to play, uh, and um, we had to re-record. So E4, uh, I'm gonna begin with a Karo Khan. This is one of the best Gotham courses that exists. Oh no. I have to um I have to add the clocks. I've made this mistake before. I've like played full games before uh with no clock. Um okay, there we go. The clocks are there. So d4, we're gonna go d5. I'm gonna see what my opponent plays. Um I've I once recorded a full game like this with with no clock whatsoever. Um my opponent, why is my opponent thinking? I mean it's like move three. I mean certainly you you have to have like some weapon against the Karo Khan, no? Maybe my opponent got a pizza delivery. I don't know. My opponent's very confused. Uh, this is, okay. E5. So obviously there's bishop f5, but I really like c5. Um, this is my favorite line. And now e6. Uh, the most critical line here is a3. So a3 is the best line. Uh, I don't know if my opponent is following some repertoire or, uh, or what, but basically knight c6 is good. But there's a menacing line with f4. e6 is actually okay to block in your bishop. It's actually considered the best line. It's the main line at the highest level. These pawns get split. Well, c3 is not very challenging. This just allows us to recapture. And actually, now we're kind of playing white. And what I mean by that is we've developed the piece first. So uh, with this pawn wedge on e5, uh, we're generally going to develop this knight to g6 and just kind of try to, you know, link up the horses on g6 and c6 toward this pawn. Uh, this is just good for structure. We don't really need to shove this forward. Queen g4. Wow, it's an aggressive move. So normally uh, in these sort of positions, you actually play knight e7 and you let them take, believe it or not. Uh, and you move your rook, and sometimes you, you even let them take two pawns, but you get such massive development that it's okay to allow that. Uh, I don't necessarily advocate for this. I, I, I think that I want to play g6 here, because I feel like this is a much more realistic choice at a 1500 level. You know? Um, I feel like knight e7, rook g8 might be the main. Uh, there's also some moments you can play king f8, and by the way, even bishop f8 to not sacrifice the right to castle. Uh, but g g6 is is it's it's really although it's a bit weakening on the light squares. Don't forget that this bishop's home isn't permanent, so the bishop could always reroute, and actually that looks fine. So okay, we have a hanging queen. We can block. We can move the queen, and we can block with a pawn. So we can block with a bishop or knight on e7, move the queen or play f or lose the queen. Or I suppose we could go danger levels, but you know, I I don't know. So. A lot of good, move, good moves here. I mean, it's very hard at this point to play probably the best move. Um, you just kind of have to go with your gut here. I don't like knight e7 because it kind of kills our opportunity to bring the bishop back. I would much rather play bishop 2e7 and trade the dark squared bishops so that their dark squared bishop can't attack our weaknesses. Uh, queen b6 is also a very good move. It obviously attacks two points. And queen b6 in general is really where you want your queen in these structures anyway. So sometimes your opponents will play these moves, like these aggressive moves that attack things for one turn. And they don't realize that by you moving out of the way or protecting against the threat, their piece is just kind of awkward there now. It really has no purpose. So the bishop and queen for white are basically that, right? Um, so f2 is a huge threat because when we take its check and also g, uh, the knight will fall. Queen e2 protects both pawns. That is actually the only move that defends both pawns. But again, like you see, now the queen is going back. So black is winning some time and white is losing some time. And plus the queen on e2 just blocks, uh, I mean, it blocks the bishop. So 
Um, definitely we've won we've won the battle of the opening now our next step in this game is probably to play like knight c6 knight e7 maybe short castle something but we will we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out i believe in us yeah this is the hard part about these videos now i have to sit here in silence um but i can always interact with you and then you can write comments to me time stamped like you know, you do anything fun this weekend? It's Sunday, so some of you are probably hungover. For those of you that are not of age to drink, uh, you... Okay, so you don't know what that means, but that's okay. Uh, so they prevented uh, our capture there, but my opponent forgot that I can take on F2. Um, and uh, now that we're taking on F2, we are winning. We are just completely winning here. Because... Now, uh, you obviously don't want to hang your queen. Don't, don't play queen e3. We can just play bishop takes knight. It's kind of tragic. It, it, it's, it's, it's a bit of a blind spot. Like normal, it's a very unusual tactic that the bishop can take the knight in the corner. That never happens. Like a bishop never goes off and takes the knight unless it's defended. And now, uh, now we're winning. Now, the hardest part of the, of the game from here is going to be like getting our bishop out safely. So if white plays something like queen f3 to prevent anything from coming to f2, uh, we have no move with our bishop. So we're just going to have to figure something out. There might be a point, like, I doubt it, but there might be a point where we just need to leave the bishop. Just leave it. It's going to take white a while to get enough material on it, but white can play moves like a4, a5, as long as we can't play queen f2. If I play queen f2 on the next move, I will be winning the bishop, and I will be up two pieces. Whoa. Okay, so the idea is that if we take, we're going to get trapped. But then we take bishop f4, and then we can always come back. Okay, that might, this might have been a little bit, a little bit enthusiastic here by white. I mean, as long as we can escape this way, we're fine. And bishop e3 just doesn't work. You always have to be careful when your queen kind of wanders in like this. Don't just be scared of abstract things. Okay, so now this is a very legitimate threat. Uh, but, and we have to, is there anything over here? I think we can just go back to b6. We just, we, we escape. We have a full rook up. We have no development though. And, uh, if you're 1500, you should not resign here. Do not resign out of frustration because you lost the rook. Yeah, continue to create threats. Do not just quit on the position. Trust me. Okay, now, do not just give checks for no reason. This is such a pet peeve of mine because you're going to move the king out of the middle and open up white's bishop. Don't do that. Play... I mean, a queen trade would be great, right? But I doubt it's going to happen. They're going to play bishop g5. So let's park our queen on c7 for now. And now we, we really need to get some pieces to the party. By the way, that is a threat. This does not win the rook because there's a pin. But you see how I'm... Like, again, I don't know if I want to take this. It's probably the best move. And then probably taking that is also decent. But there is rook c1. I mean, there's all these tactics that you start allowing once you don't finish your development. So I'm going to go knight d7 to prevent queen f6. Knight c6 is also very human. And now I just want to, I want to get my pieces out because even though you're up a rook, you don't feel it. Rooks are weird. You don't feel them when you're up them sometimes because like they're just in the corner. There's no actual rook presence, right? Now, again, we can take or take, but I think it's more important to just get everybody going. If we could trade a knight for a bishop, another knight for... That's when the presence of the rooks are going to be felt. If there are two rooks in the corner and your opponent only has one, you, you, that, that is a rook up for sure. Whereas in a position like this, if white found a way to like activate all their pieces and attack our king, but the problem for white is the weak king. But I was going to say, if they found a way to attack our king, it would have been really bad news. And we wouldn't have felt the extra rook. Now you can take, you can also play... I'm just going to take. This is the easiest. And now the queens are coming off. Now the queens are coming off with no queens on the board. Now we can safely say we are completely winning. And now resignation actually is okay by white. If white were to resign here, it would be, be, it would be fine. Uh, let's go b6. I want to trade yet another piece. That would be really nice for me. More pieces I can trade, the better. Bishop d7, bishop here is... 
completely fine. If you're ever watching me play one of these games and you think that you found a move that's like good or better, totally, it's, it's, it's totally feasible. See, now if I go here, there's B5, so I'm just going to go here. Um, it's totally possible that we found moves that are equally good. When a position is really good, sometimes there's multiple moves that are, that are good. That's just how it works. That's just life. And that's okay. So, Caro course. E5, C5. 40% off. You know what to do. I'm just saying. I love the Karo Khan. Uh, I've, you know, it's, it's, it's an opening that uh, brought me back to chess when I was like 15, after I had quit for some time. I've talked about this a lot. I, it's an opening I, I kind of understand like better than my own name. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but... Now we're going to be edgy. We're not even going to castle because in end games, yeah, your king can actually be safe and sound in the center of the board. Trying to trade every piece, like no questions asked. But again, this is a position where if you want to play d4 and attack this, by all means do that. Now we also have this. Rook e1 to come pin me. I just take with check. And then I defend everything. See, predictable, predictable. Now we're going to play something like f6. Oh, we need to guard this. Okay, little instructional moment. We need to protect this. I'm going to protect it with my king, and now I have three mating threats. One, two, and three. That's funny. Anytime I can, and, and, and now four, by the way, but I'm going to do this one. So uh, rookie three is a very nice mate. That's a, that's a mating net. I mean, if a king ever walks into the front like this, you're like, wait a minute. They got no way out. They got no way out. King d6. Cut everything off with the king, uh, and we get the win. So, um, so c3 is not a move. Um, it's not a move that's in the course. I don't think. I think it's just it's it's not a mistake, but it's you know white can do better. I think than um, than that. Uh, we played g6, bishop g5, and um, wow, the machine actually already wants me to go for bishop f2. That is incredible. If you notice, that's not even a move I considered. Wow, queen b6. And go for b2 and the rook is trapped. So I wouldn't do this because I feel like our queen can get trapped. Something like queen e2, queen... Like, imagine your queen just gets stuck. I mean, that'd be horrible. The engine thinks it's okay. But um, this is also good for, for us. And, uh, of course, white just blundered on move 8. On move 8. But it happens. It happens. It happens. Um, so, okay. Um, next opponent. We are playing with the white pieces. Uh, Trees Eric, uh, I am going to play e4. Oh, okay, Karo Khan. So, uh, the, the Karo Khan, what I think is the best and most testing variation is the advanced variation. Um, so I think, I'm trying to think if there's maybe any sort of gambits, but I'm just going to play d4. And let's play knight c3, d, e, and f3. Let's play like this. So we're going to play the, uh, the, the Black Mar Demer style gambit, which is when you... It, it's not necessarily the Black Mar Demer, but, um, you know, and then here, even instead of taking back, I'm, I'm going to play bishop c4. I'm going to insist that my opponent take my gambit. That's what I'm going to do. And he does. So now, now knight f3. Queen f3 is very, it's, it's very bold, but it's probably just bad. So now bishop g4 would be a horrible mistake because bishop takes f7 is a nasty tactic. And then knight e5 check, and he fell for it. Bishop takes f7 check. Knight e5. And now knight takes g4. Also, my opponent is typing in Discord as he's playing the game. That's why featuring teenagers in your How to Win a Chess series when they're all talking on Discord in chat as they're playing, very bad. Very, very bad. Relax. Focus. You shouldn't have any distractions. Because now look, two games back to back, winning on move eight. Terrible. But this is, this is a, one of my gambit suggestions with the white pieces. This is a very interesting uh, variation against the Caro. Very annoying. Um, now... You know, sometimes high-rated players watch my videos, and then they sit there and they say that uh, I'm a poor influence or something in the opening. 
Objectively speaking, this gambit is completely fine for black. Black has many ways to equalize. However, you play chess so that you get practically good positions. As good of a practical position as you can get, give yourself the best winning chances. By the way, there is no long castle, because the king has already moved. So we're going to develop as many pieces as possible. You may ask why I'm not taking with check. This is a concept known as keeping the tension. There's no need to commit knight takes f6 here. No need. I would much rather they commit to me and I get my queen out. But now there is a threat and there's another threat. Right? So take, take, hitting on d4. Um, I don't think I'm going to guard b2 because if I, uh, there's all sorts of like rook b1 stuff. Mm, I also really don't want to play this move though. I don't want to play knight takes f6 because I, I feel like I'm helping my opponent. Hmm. But if I bring my knight back, then they take, right? I'm going to bring my knight back. Come and take my pawn. You're so bold. Come and take it. I'm going to play queen d3. It's like, you know, sacrificing the b2 pawn to open up the b file. Very common. A lot of, a lot of common themes um, that, that can overlap in some of these games. And again, there's no long castle. There's also no short castle. That king is stuck directly in the center. So I would move my king off of this queen's diagonal if it stays on that diagonal. And then I would like to open up the center of the board. Like if I can just crash through with d5, that would be, that would be wonderful. Um, I want to go d5, but again, I'm, I'm pinned, which is kind of annoying. Uh, knight c4 is not a bad move. I would be a little bit concerned with playing knight c4 because... You know, these one-move attacking moves, you have to be sure that they can't just counterattack you. Uh, so it's, um, it's one of these things. Like, you, you, be, before you just go off and attack your opponent's pieces, you, you want to make sure you're actually doing something useful, which is not always, it's not always happening uh, if you just go and attack. So Queen E2 threatens mate. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get that. Uh, now, now d5 looks really strong. Like, we can continue to play with queens and rooks. But I, I mean, I, I really like d5. I also do like bringing the rook here to the party. And that, that's a really nice position because we have all six of our pieces playing. So we're threatening knight d6 mate. That's straight up mate. So bishop g7 has to be played, which I assume was the whole point of going g6, right? You... You're not going to hang that. Um, unless my opponent wants to throw for content. in which I mean, of course, they see knight d6. They are not going to blunder it. But... Uh, judging by the amount of time being spent right now, I'm actually getting kind of concerned. Like, please don't go b5 and hang knight d6. Please. Please. Please go bishop g7. Please. Oh my god. I'm getting scared. It's already a very difficult position, by the way. I mean, knight d6 or not. You know, knight d6 is a fun way to go out, but... Uh, okay, king f7. Now there's knight e5. Here, he has so many good-looking moves. I mean, this is one of these positions, like, you look at the forcing stuff, like knight e5. If take, take, fantastic. Fantastic. Then the knight moves... This is under attack, but here's the thing. They don't have to take. So you need to be able to, 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 to go after that as well. That, that's the only reason I wouldn't play 95, is because it, it's not a forced exchange. So I'm just going to go rookie one. I want to bring my rook. That's an idea. If I asked you which one of my six pieces, my two knights, my bishop, my queen, my two rooks, is the worst, what would you say? Are you paying attention or are you just watching in another tab? Which one of my pieces is the worst? Um, the worst piece is this knight, I think. I think it's participating in the game the least of all the pieces. We go to e6. We force the king back. So knight, this still loses to knight d6, queen f7. King f8 is forced. Which is very hard to play because you... Yeah, but once you see the other thing is just mate. In fact... Sometimes, very good positions make impossible moves look possible. And knight d6 threatens queen f7. And if you take, I take with a bishop and it's still mate. So knight d6 wins. 
There's no forcing moves for black. The only way to prevent mate is to play queen e8, at which point I will just promptly take the queen. Pawn takes, and here. And we get another nice, aggressive victory. So, um, yeah, knight d6 is, uh, is lights out. And my opponent is still typing in Discord, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, if you sign up for... Uh, if, if you sign up for... Win a chess. You really, you really should, uh, you know, take your your time and focus. And I understand it's like nerve wracking, of course. Playing the same way I have nerves when I'm playing like grandmasters. You know, you guys have ner uh, you guys have nerves when you're playing your favorite uh, comedian. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm not really sure what there is to think about here. You have one move or one move. Everything else is made. I suppose you can go knight e5. The only reason I haven't considered this move is I can take it with <laughs> four pieces. Um, and yeah, I don't think the situation has improved much at all. <laughs> you just gave a free knight. Your knight just, you know, it's one of those movie moments where you're like, to get to him, you gotta get through me. And then you just immediately die. Like, no questions asked. It's not even, anti you know, there's no climactic moment, nothing. You just... So queen d6, we take. So now there's no threat of mate. We can sack the rook for two pieces. And we will end this game with rook e7 and queen g7 mate here. And we can pre-move. Actually, rook g7 is also mate. Queen g7, rook g7, uh, queen f7. And black gets swarmed. And very nice aggressive victory versus Mr. Trees Eric, who did admittedly blunder. He has offered me a draw. It's funny, but I will not be accepting. Now, um, if my opponent hadn't blundered with bishop g4, let's say they play e6, right? So e... or bishop f5, yeah? Like, bishop f5 is standard. So let's say we castle something like e6. You develop maybe queen e2, maybe knight e5, maybe, maybe bishop g5. Something like this. And you, you just get all your pieces out. This, these positions can be super annoying for black. Well, let's say your bishop is on f4. It doesn't really matter. If you trade this bishop and then put your knight on e5 and then rotate your rook, I mean, suddenly you have one, two, maybe your queen joins the party, two rooks attacking the king. Now the machine is always saying what the machine is saying. You're playing a 3400 rated computer. Of course, you're going to lose all the time. It's going to tell you some stuff. But just because the position is better on the machine doesn't mean that it's practically that easy to play, right? So that's just that's why I like uh, that's why I like that little kind of gambit. Now, advanced Karl Khan is also fantastic. Uh, now we are going to play with the black pieces. I actually played Inerid once. C4. Hmm. Okay. So we're gonna play the G6 modern course. I'm gonna play the. Um, I'm gonna play some Bishop G7 here. Okay, so my opponent is playing like the, the classical way. So d6. And what I, what I actually advocate for here is a very quick e5. Uh, e5 and f5 and c6 to kind of blunt this bishop. So this could be an interesting way for some of you to play. There's another way to play here with knight c6, bishop d7, and queen c8. Um, the thing is, I'm not sure my opponent will actually allow me to do that. So my opponent is just playing standard stuff. So let's play like e5. So like bishop d7. This is a very deceiving move. So now queen c8. Okay. So to go over here. This is a very, very fun way to play this position. Now what a lot of English players will do here is they're going to play rook e1. They're going to play... Okay, d4 is also very reasonable. But, but rook e1 is designed to move out of the way to not trade the bishop. Because otherwise we would take the rook. So you don't have to take. Let's go over here. And let's trade that bishop. That bishop is the pride of the English position for white. The pride of the position. And when we finish trading it, we will then chip away with h5, h4. This is one of the ways I like to play. The other way, like I said, just e5, f5, take some space, get the knight back, castle, and a very complex English battle. So d5, okay. Um, I can take and bring the king out first, or I can just move the knight back. Question is, do I want the knight on d8 or e7? I don't think I want to go back to the home square, and coming out here is really stupid because queen a4 check, which would be tragic. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I actually don't know. I mean... I, yeah, I, 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 I actually don't know the difference. Maybe the king is better back there, but maybe the king is also better for me if it's out. So let's go, let's go knight back to e7. Now, queen a4, there's actually moments you can play king f8. That's very hard to do, admittedly. Um, it is far more human to try to block the check. I would not block with the pawn. So there's this pawn on d5, and if you allow white to take, it just opens up white's position. The locked center is good for a player who's just trying to operate over there and doesn't need to worry about anything else, right? So e4, um, and now, now here comes uh, h5. So th th this is our way of using our rook, using that h-file. Um, opponent can make the position super spicy. This I don't like. f4 I thought was better. So now, maybe I can still play h4. But then just bishop takes. But then maybe f6 and the bishop is trapped somehow. Then f4. Hmm. There's a lot, I mean... Just f6, right? Just f6. I mean, the bishop g5 move has not prevented us from, from getting forward with our plan. Uh, if bishop h4, the bishop gets trapped. So the bishop should come back here. In king's Indian positions, white needs to attack on the queen side. That is, that is the only way in a close center when white can survive the black king side attack. So right now, we are going to play uh, h4, and we have a massive threat. The threat is to take and take and team the queen up with the rook on the h3 square. That is what our goal is. And if white waits any longer to create counterplay, they're going to get demolished. So white needs to play c5, f4, something. c5 is probably the best move. Probably. If the king... Mm, I'm not sure the king can survive the attack, though. So then the question is, is f4 a move? But f4 is really hard to do because that's not where you're supposed to attack. And our knight can jump in with knight g4 or something. We will see. Oh, well, well, I can't castle through my queen. But sometimes I'm clicking around and I accidentally click on something. So this is... I, I, I love this way of attacking the English. I, I've beaten many, many GMs in Blitz with it. Um, and even, I mean, this, this is one of the, you know, highest percentile rated players that can exist, right? For, like, casual players. I mean, this player is 1900chess.com. That's really no joke. A, a, a person's higher rated than 95% of the YouTube audience. I asked once. I did the statistics. So. Uh, now, some of you might think, Mr. Gotham, why do you only play your courses when you do these videos? I try not to play, like, really simple, silly stuff. I try to kind of play, I guess, King F7. Very hard to tell the difference between these two moves. I, I, I don't know. Um, I try to play, you know, like, m the repertoires that I recommend, and I, I try to give you all the ideas, kind of like live-action class of it. Uh, if there's something you want me to play, like, I, I would happily play a Nimso Indian or some... Some openings that are main lines that I don't usually that I don't usually play. Uh, but the the thing is, I also want to give you high quality instruction. I'm not trying to wing playing the you know Nidorf Cecil. I don't play the Nidorf, so I'm not gonna sit here and kind of pretend to give you a masterclass of it. Also, no one watching should play the Nidorf. No one. I mean, if you're watching and you're like 2600 for some reason, I don't know why you're watching this video, but you're allowed to play the Nidorf. Uh, but uh, if, if, if you're not, then I play something else. There's Karl Khan. I mean, it's just so easy to play compared to the Nine Dwarf. So, um... Anyway, we await a move. King F7 has been played. C5, there it is. C5 played, and, um... We gotta figure out what to do. So I think taking, I think what my opponent is going to do here is they're just going to run with their king. So the question is, does it matter how to take? I don't think it matters at all. I think there is zero difference. So I am going to take on g3. 
I anticipate this. I'm not okay. Oh, okay. So I anticipate incorrectly. Interesting. Wow. So my opponent is just claiming that they're safe in that position. Wow. That is. That's bold. <laughs> that is bold. Take, take, queen h3, and you're telling me that after king f3, you are safe. Wow. Well, if anything, that's just telling me I, I, I shouldn't capture. It's a very complicated position. I mean, I want to bring my queen, right? I want to... But the truth is, if I just bring my queen, I mean, are we actually... Are we getting anywhere? This is incredible. They might have... They, they, they might have defended. I mean, I don't know. The thing is, once the, once the king gets out, rook h1 also becomes possible, which is just, just wild, frankly. I want to prevent knight b5, actually. I'm, I'm almost thinking to play just a very calm move for, for a moment, just to relax. But also, part of me wants to play like knight h6, knight g4, blah, blah, blah. See where it can get us. But yeah, I mean, I... I I'm not taking because I feel like allowing the bishop into my territory is kind of silly. Incredible. Good defense. Poof, okay. Yeah, let's play a6. So we're preventing anything from coming to b5. Now counterplay will probably come down the c file. So I anticipate something like rook c1. Now, if bishop h3, queen h3, uh, it's just mate. So the king actually walking out to f3, that is, that is high level stuff. Like that is, that, that, that is why you watch the series. So you see, I just said there, there's going to be the counterplay. Um, I'm going to go out to g4. I wonder if f3 is fine. And queen h5. See, this is what I want. I want to get on the h file, and then I maybe want to just leave and just go down to h2. I also want to join with my knight. Going to f8 would have given me the option to have knight f7, but I don't really know why I would ever want that. I want to go forward. Maybe I need to trade this bishop somehow? Like, maybe that's smart? Trading the dark squared bishop? Because mine sucks, and this one's very good, and would kind of remove a little bit of defense from the king. I'm sure the, the, the engine actually prefers White's position. Computers, computers can see through a lot of this stuff. Ooh. Man, my, I, I, I mean, my opponent just is really asking for trouble. Like, I... I okay, maybe Bishop H6, yeah? Let's go Bishop H6. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's trust our gut. Let's trade that Bishop. And we'll maybe take with a knight. I mean, I, I like rook takes also. I think rook takes is also strong. If we can trade both bishops, it, see, it seems like we, we still have the superior situation on the board. This knight is so bad. It cannot move anywhere. Neither can the knight on c3, but uh, the knight on e2 at least can't, even, can't go backwards either. So there, there's also funny stuff because we have our queens on the same line. Something like knight f5 would be nice if it was possible. Like if this queen wasn't protected, I would be able to jump my knight into the territory. Of course, there is a queen there, and of course the queen is protected, but just good to see these tactical things. Knight d1. Uh, oh, 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 that queen just lost the guard. There might be something here. So I can't go knight f5. If I play knight takes d5, my opponent might... Pin me? Man, I really want to play that move and I just can't do it. What if I take, take and play queen h5? What if I just play queen h5? I kind of like just playing queen h5. But if I just play queen h5, there might be take, take, rook c7, which looks terrifying. But okay, let's play queen h5. 
So in one swoop, we might move both bishops and give a mate. Wouldn't that be something? Don't know if it's possible. And now, counterplay is coming. So white has done a very decent job here of creating counterplay. And it's, it's scary. It's a scary position for everyone. This position is not a cakewalk for anybody. Queen b4. I, I, th there is so much trouble being asked for here. Ooh. Oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Check. So here, here, here. King takes. The king is still getting out to f3. I mean, that is, that is ludicrous that that is happening. I can play bishop g5 here, although this is also threatened. Oh my goodness. Bishop g5 at least maybe sets up... No, there, there's just absolutely... There's nothing. I mean, I really don't want to take. I, I, like, I think that just allows way too much. Guys, this is crazy. Like the, the 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 this is this is nuts. I think I'm gonna go f5. And there is one point to the move f5. It's that I want to take on g2. And then somehow give a checkmate. So like take take. And somehow give mate. I mean, are you really telling me it's not possible? So, wow. Guys, I want to cry. This is wild. Bishop f8 is what I want to play. <laughs> oh my gosh. I actually might cry if there's no checkmate in this position. Let's take. So queen d6 allows queen e6. But I was thinking we had like f4. But maybe f4 he can... And then play queen e6. Wow. Maybe we can allow queen e6 and just go back. Okay, let's take now. And then maybe if take, take, queen h3, king f3. Wow. Maybe fe4 first. Guys, no, but this is crazy. Is the king actually getting away? Bishop e3, knight e3, queen h3, king here, f e4, king e4. What? What? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I go here. Oh my gosh, and my, I think my opponent just blundered. Check. And now I take on e4. And then it's made on f5. That's what I was trying to set up for a while. I was trying to set up the fact that after king f3, f e4, king e4, queen f5 is made. I needed to take here with a pawn. And I needed the king to walk into this. That's what I was trying to set up. With a knight on e3, with a knight on e3, queen f5 wouldn't have been possible. So if we back up for a moment, right? So here, um, black is winning. So apparently queen h5 and black is winning. Why is black winning? Let's say queen b4. What is, what is the engine? So the engine thinks that black is winning with the idea g5, g4. Wow. G5, if C takes D6, here, here, and then check 
here and then this is the idea oh to come in with the g pawn that is fascinating bishop h6 was wrong i had to go with the g pawn here to play queen h5 g5 i was only thinking f5 but g5 to bait the king out to f3 and then have the g pawn oh to smother the king to death and then here queen h5 was probably also good and f5 is the top engine suggestion in this position wow and then here i freaked out i think cd6 is bad yeah the computer likes take take f4 which is just that's so not human and the threat of f4 is uh take here f3 and then i mean yeah that that that's so hard that's wow um yeah here apparently white is winning white is winning after this absurd move knight g1 i mean and and that move makes a lot of sense that move makes a lot of sense i let the queen in and i didn't get my queen to actually attack anything useful so when you spend too much time and in a panic you have to make a decision you're going to do something wrong which is what happened which is what happened it was a very hot position um f5 was okay but uh yeah i mean take take f4 pawn takes f4 bishop g2 is is crazy stuff um and this is not even better for black because g4 crazy game we could have won it in a little bit of an easier way but um that was uh that was a fun game that was a high level game of chess uh inerid's very strong all right we're up next against pawn sniper i played e4 let's play d4 oh b6 okay so let's play the london um I guess our opponent is going to play e6, b6. So what I like to play against this is to just play a normal setup. And if black commits with f5 too early, to go queenside. Yeah, so, so now we play like this. Knight d2, so you just do a typical London. But then, but then what you do is you play queen e2, castle long and go for a quick e4. You don't castle. Castles is like autopilot. But sometimes you can wait in the London. You don't need to castle right away. When you get stronger at chess, you realize that sometimes, depending on how they set up in the opening, you can make it very annoying for them. And castle long. So now I'm going to play queen e2. And I'm kind of indicating I might be thinking about long castling here right I'm, I'm not telling them yet which way i'm going i'm just clearing out the back row I have, I have both options open and then if they castle into short castle i will play h4 play c3 so i'm still being flexible i'm just finishing our our london setup this is not a this is not a bad setup but knight c6 kind of blocks the bishop which doesn't fully make sense like the knight should go there um now the interesting thing is black also hasn't castled so if I castle long, black might also castle long, which would be pretty funny. So maybe we take this moment to attack the center because we actually have a, an opening there. We have our queen, bishop, knight, all supporting that advance. So maybe we advance in the center and we, we, we really put some pressure on black to, to which way they're going to castle. There's this fine dance you have to go on, you know, because queen e7 I can take, but my bishop gets trapped. So queen e7, if we both castle long, we're... <laughs> Where it's not going to be so easy to attack our opponent. But this is the way I like to play London into e6, b6. I mean, e6, b6 is, you know, we got that too. Clearly, we are dealing with an individual who has, already has that, that repertoire, the Gotham repertoire there. Um, now we wait. I mean, I think you have... Okay, short castle. Interesting. Now they choose to castle as the F file is going to open up. So we can take or push or ignore. Uh, if take, take, knight takes, and maybe queen takes. Then we're in the way of the bishop there. I don't know. I could slide out to g5. I, I mean, I, I don't hate pushing. 
honestly. Like, this structure is really nice. We're really making this bishop look silly. The knight is going to come and attack us. We are going to move out and attack the queen. Because it's, I think it's better than going here. I always talk about making these one-move threats, and you guys might be confused, like, why are you going here? Well, because chess is also about time, and if I waste time, like, just retreating, black is going to take over the initiative. So I'm going to play this move for now. But I do have to be a little bit alert here, because h6 is coming. And I don't have a convenient place for my bishop. Now, I could play c4, but then knight comes, and that doesn't... That doesn't make me very happy. I could move this knight and escort the bishop back. That doesn't look stupid. I might do that. Question is where? Do I go knight f1? Do I go knight c4? Knight c4, there could be this silly move. Uh, let's go knight c4. So I'm anticipating h6. Anticipating h6 is very... And see, instantly played. It's a very high level idea here to just find a way back for my bishop. Um, we still haven't castled. But that's okay. We are probably going to create an attack. But you don't want to just push and get blockaded. If, our, if my opponent can create a, a strong pawn wall, we're going to have no way through. It's a very close position. Very close position here. Uh, all, uh, all eight pawns on the board for both sides. So it, it'll come down to structure and then square weaknesses. And you know even various pawn breaks like B5 aren't silly. It's not a pawn break, just a pawn thrust. You know, because if I go knight e3, we block our bishop, and then knight f4 becomes available if I play knight. Okay, that unprovoked on its own. Wow. Well, I, I'm the first thing I think about is can I sack, right? Um, can I sack, and what should I sack with? Like, should I take, take, and play knight g5? I don't think so because we don't have a queen h5 in the future. We just don't have it now. I could play h4. But then g4. g4 on its own, they just take, I think. Oh, but then maybe, maybe there, and we have some... Mmm. Mmm. g4. Of course, they don't have to take at all. They can just sit there like, what do you want? That's the thing. g4, if you just calculate takes, you'll convince yourself you have mate. You know, what if I, what if I castle long? What if I... Okay, now b5. Play it instantly. Okay. Knight a3. I don't want to allow this. Probably a6, yeah. And we can continue bringing... Let's bring the knight back. We don't need to think too much. I don't like where my knight is, so let's bring it back. We need to do something about this structure. Something. g4 is an idea. h4 inducing g4 seems right. It just seems right to make black push all those pawns. But then my knight is very restricted. Like, very restricted. I mean, uncomfortably restricted, it has to go back. But it's a fascinating position. It's very interesting stuff here. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is a pawn break. In close positions, you always kind of have to monitor where the opponent can try to break out. If my opponent goes d6, I have to figure out if I'm taking or reinforcing. And by the way, th this is really still not off the table. It could still happen. But if I have the pawn back here, it's better for me. When you thrust your pawns all the way forward, they can't go back, right? So if my pawn remains on h2, I can always play pawn to h3. And if my pawn is on h4, I cannot play pawn to h3. Which 48 minutes into this video, you may have learned that pawns cannot move backwards. So there's d6. Now, my first instinct is to continue to have this pawn block so that it blocks everything in black's position. On the other hand, I can take and play rook e1 and attack this. But I, I, I think this is correct. I think it's better to continue to restrict black's movement rather than try to take on d6 and open up the position for black. Plus, if we take then d4 becomes open for something. Or we can also take with the knight. And uh, now this is out of the way. So if the knight is gone, we can continue our pawn attack here. But we have to do it in the right way. We have to do it in the right way. <clears throat> B5. 
Mm -hmm. If takes g4, and this pawn is hard to protect. I'm going to take with the knight. I like getting the knight out of the way. Takes, takes. Now that pawn wedge is still there. The dark squared bishop for black is just powerless. c5 is a great move. Trying to trap my bishop. Potentially succeeding. I don't have a lot of good squares because if I move my knight, if I move my knight, then knight f4 is coming. And then that bishop is super strong. I mean, I really don't want to play c4 myself because it's pushing a pawn in front of my own king. But I might, I'm, yeah, I might have to. So, this game might just come down to the fact that black's dark squared bishop is absolutely terrible. That, 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 that really is it. But knight b6 is coming. Man, my opponent is really not playing. Is this guy, like, really high rated in blitz? 1390 in blitz. 1390 in blitz. Wow. That is impressive. That is no joke. That is, that is good stuff. How strong are they at Rapid? They've played 2,500 Rapid games. Wow. Jeez. Awesome. Okay, that's a free pawn, but I think if you take that pawn, you should be beaten. So don't, don't take that pawn. Now we got to figure out what to do on the king side here. And we got to figure out quick. Let's play h4. Just seems like right now is the right time. So they're going to play g4, obviously. They have to play g4. <laughs> they have nothing else. Um, now I could play this because knight f4 is not an attack on a bishop. Question is, do I want to? I can also play this really hilarious move, which prevents the knight from retreating back and attacking my light squared bishop. But it looks really dumb. I also can play f3, and the point of f3 is to win a pawn, and otherwise to open up the g-file. h5! I'm going to take, so either you're going to open up my walkway, or you're going to open up this diagonal to your king, and both don't look that pleasant. But to my opponent, it doesn't matter because they are still rattling off moves. Okay, uh, let's try to win the battle for the f-file, let's try to match that rook. Opponent just firing off these moves, like no doubt in their mind that surrendering control of the f-file is good. Wow. Bold. Probably mistaken, but bold. Let's go... Maybe, maybe even knight e3. I don't know. I don't want to trade my bishop for this knight, unless absolutely necessary. I don't have queen e4, but... Uh... See, queen a4 is a move, maybe. Yes, yeah, c4 is, uh, is one of those moves. You sack the pawn, but you open your c file. But you also have bishop takes g2. Actually, c4 is maybe not even, like, so bad. I, I, I might even have to go here. Okay, and there, there it is, of course. Let's go here. Okay, they take immediately. I, I'm, Black is still playing without a bishop, which we've done a very good job of completely keeping this bishop out of the game throughout this, this whole match. Knight a4. Mm -hmm. This is under attack. I could play bishop c3, but after takes, takes, and maybe queen b5, I mean, that just looks... That looks horrible, I have to say. Wow. Queen, C, queen takes c4. Oh my gosh. This is, a, this is a very, very scary position. And if I, if I play bishop c3, this bishop is totally going to come alive. Hmm. Man, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Okay, let's take on c4. There's a lot of hanging pawns here. A lot of them. This is possible, but I... I don't think that you want to open your king that much. I don't know. I think it's much smarter to take on b2.
two I'll, I'll i like the two minute time advantage i also would love a queen trade i don't think we're gonna get it but i would love a queen trade i think i think black has very very good chances here yeah so let's take on a6 so right now we're gluing this queen to the defense of this pawn because if the queen like yo I mean, that is nuts. If that move is actually okay. Okay, so my first instinct is to play rook to e1. That's my only instinct. Just play rook to e1. Knight d3 doesn't work. We take. Uh, we now attack the bishop and the pawn back here. What the hell is going on in this position? What a wacky game. This is why I, I like I like recording these episodes against like super strong players because I mean some of these games are just are just totally nuts. This is the kind of game like you I mean this is a, a pure shootout basically like uh, every tactics all over the board hanging pawns hanging pieces. You can't really be sad if you lose a game like this, but there's a lot to learn always about your vision and everything, and my, my opponent's been playing a fantastic game, so. But I... Queen d7? To give me the bishop, but set up knight d3? Come on. Come on. R Are you kidding me? I mean, now I only see rookie three as a possibility, too. Oh my god. I mean, okay, I guess I'll play rookie. Is there like bishop f4? Am I like losing? No, then I have check. Rook d8? No, but can't I take? Queen d2? No, I, there's still knight d3. What? Whoa, this is this is completely insane. Um I uh, Huh? <laughs> Queen e wait. What if I go here? Knight t3, king f king. I just try to walk my king. Queen d7. You play queen d7. Are you, are you kidding me? Jeez. Okay, so if this, this, that doesn't work. So king d1. What what a what a insane position. Yo, is there a bishop here? And then some double check? No, I don't think so. Okay, knight f4. Yeah, that's not like the world's craziest move. Okay, let's go queen f2. Opponent has 15 seconds, which is nice. And this just a blunder. Rook takes c3. Everything is safe. We did not hang a mate. Okay, I mean, they have five seconds. We'll play rook d3. And uh, we'll live, li li live to tell the tale. Or something. Okay, I mean, let's just briefly analyze that. Um, that was absolutely nuts. And uh, opponent just straight up had a better like game for a while. Which was kind of insane. Um, okay, so, I mean, they played, like, every good move, basically. I mean, rook takes f1 was the best move, apparently. I mean, that that's completely blows my mind. After c4, we're losing. Wow. So, take, take, knight a4... 
And then Queen D7. Wow. What a move. Yeah, we were lost. We were just lost this whole game. Rook D, I mean, that is the best move. And then they just blundered. They, 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 they blundered after playing probably the game of their life. Goodness, that was, uh, that was a stressful game. Um, yeah, I mean, we, it looked like we had a very decent position uh, for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Black did a very, very good job playing there. Okay, uh, now, now Zod Hogan, here we go. Uh, now Zod Hogan has been waiting for a while. Appreciate your, um, uh, your patience. Knight F3. All right, let's go for a modern again. Um, one second. I have to respond about... Picking up a something. One sec. Play bishop g7. Okay, d6. Very solid. So you will notice that this has now become a ready English. So it was a English ready. And um If white fianchettos, maybe we will go for the same thing. Okay, so my opponent is not fianchettoing. They're going to take a full center approach. And against the full center approach, we're going to play bishop g4. We're going to take, and we're going to try to lock up the center of the board. Bishop g4. Well, I can't say anything now because my opponent's not moving. Bishop <clears throat> G4. So now you play things like e5. You try to close the center. Very similar to actually that last game that we played. Uh, but, di but different because we were trying to do stuff over there, right? So um, isn't this just a mistake? Oh, wow. It's not a mistake. <laughs> he's, he's like, no, because queen f3, knight d4. So now we're going to go e5. So we, um, we've given up our bishop. We've damaged the structure. We're now trying to play for the dark squares. Um, Whoa, taking on e5 is so strange. Okay, I'm going to take, and I'm going to welcome a queen trade and try to fight for that, that juicy d4 square. Oh, that square looks... Ooh! I'm about to act up for that d4 square. Maybe knight e7? Oh, just go to d4. Don't even ask any questions. Just go straight into d4. And then uh, a trade is very bad. I mean, just, just so we understand. I mean, w white's major advantage right now is playing with the white pieces and therefore having an extra move on me. So white can, like, finish development or something. But also the bishop pair. Like, you somehow get your bishops coordinated. Um, in these sorts of structures, because white has moved e and c side by side, nobody can fight for the square in the middle. I have not done that. This is why this structure is slightly better for black, because I can win that square, and then my C pawn can win the battle for the D5 square. Which is why E4 and C4 structures like this leave a big hole in the middle. And if white isn't good at protecting it, now we have a pass pawn. So first of all, we have a pass pawn. Now white also doesn't have a bishop pair, and we're going to go C6 next and just kick the knight out. So actually black is already just much better, structurally. Um, I can protect this. Um, and uh, c6 will kick the knight out. Queen 
Queen a5 is a check, which forces the king to move. Um, probably that's the way to go, right? I mean, I can also like do something like this. The thing about this is that even though I can force the king to move, well, then actually I can come back. Oh, look at this. This is such, this is so annoying. Um, this is so annoying. And now I will go queen c7. So now we've limited our opponent's right to castle. We're going to win the battle on the dark squares. Knight f6 or knight e7? Probably knight here, and then we're going to castle. I can also rotate the knight to these two squares, which would be really nice. It's really hard for the opponent to move this light squared bishop out too. Castles. Sorry, I am. Um... Totally forgetting that, like, I'm supposed to blah, 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 blah throughout all this. Uh, this is interesting. You, you, you almost want to be like, yeah, 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 that looks dumb. There's nothing there. But it's a little annoying. I, I always like to follow a rule of thumb to play h5 whenever somebody plays h4. Just don't let them have any fun. Uh, but... You know, if we don't do it, maybe... You know. But yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So A5, A4 is interesting. B5 is interesting. C5 and then A5, A4 is interesting. We have a lot of interesting stuff this knight is getting stronger by the minute it's very it's actually very annoying because now knight d7 there could be a trade here so let's play a5 and then maybe even something crazy like this opponent is going for a think the pawn play in the position um for white does exist like e5 could be a thing but if you move your e pawn forward then this structure in every end game is is just terrible it's just it's just not good <laughs> uh and if f4 of course i just take this pawn not this pawn that's illegal but This is also a pretty close position. We've had a few of these today. This is seven pawns each, but this one's more open than the position that had eight pawns each. The last game was it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this bishop is super annoying. Very powerful. Makes me kind of want to go knight d7 and make my opponent decide whether they want to trade it or not. Because if I get to e5 or something, um, that's a good move, trying to hide the king. Very reasonable. Maybe knight d7 now, rook a6, rook b6 looks okay. c5, a4 looks okay. I'm going to go for c5, a4. That looks... Oh, but king b1 allows queen c2. So the queen can actually get out... You sure about this move? Did I, 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 I feel like this queen is really running out of squares. I mean, I don't know. Um, I 
So for example, rook d8, a4, rook a5, queen is trapped. But there's e5. There comes that move. Uh, I guess my opponent's trying to get to d7. So interesting, because now, now I can't go for my traditional uh, route of my piece. Okay, let's go knight h7, rook d8, and knight f8, if we have time for everything. We don't have time for everything. Okay, there's rook d8. This queen, I, I, I was saying, might run out of squares. It, it, it doesn't have a lot of squares left. Oh, bishop, that is annoying. Why are you so annoying? Why is this guy so annoying? I don't know. What, what, what I do to this guy to deserve this? Rook c8? That's I want to trap this queen. <laughs> okay, let's go rook c8. Um... I wonder if I can sack and just bulldoze. That actually looks really interesting. Oh, don't do it, Gotham. Gotham. Don't do it. Don't do it. Take, take, here. Knight moves. Some d3 move or something. No, I mean, I think white structure is just way too solid there. So... Person is playing a very decent game, I have to say. Doing a very nice job. It's, ve it's a very complicated game. I, d I don't know if we're, like, losing. I mean, last game we just were getting completely killed. That was, uh... That was rough stuff in the last game. So f5 is a big question mark. If we can survive after f5. I want to trade queens. Like, I really... I feel like this is, a uh... Queen b6, some... I don't know. I, I'm, I might just have to do something totally... I might just have to go for this. Just go for this attack and see what happens. Um... What? You just giving me this? Why? Don't, don't take like this. Please don't take. Okay, 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 okay. He had like a... He could have hung mate there. I mean, not, not that I'm against that, but um, that would be terribly anticlimactic if that's how the game ended. I need to get my knight out. I mean, I guess we can... The question is, do, do I want a queen trade? I don't, I don't know. I know nothing. Like, I, my, my brain got fried halfway through the recording this episode, and now I'm... Uh, And now, now the brain is like barely functioning. So I can take on h4. This pawn is super strong. I need my knight out into the game. Ay, ay, ay. I, I can get it out. d6, knight e6. Um, I'm also hungry. Do not play chess hungry. It's the trouble with these episodes. Like sometimes I sit down and I'm like, all right, let's play these games. And then I just get. I just zone out. Um, and then we get like, you know. So yeah, it's happening right now. <laughs> it's happening right now. It's just, it's hard. It's hard to do these. So I try to do them like once every three weeks, maybe once every month. Um, I should like have some snacks ready. Um, Yeah, I want to go bishop h6. Target this pawn. The real question is, how strong... I gotta get my queen out, maybe. I was gonna say, how strong is uh, this d pawn? Right now, it's, it, it's really... That, that basically what this game is gonna come down to. How strong is the pawn? That's it. Hmm... Queen h2 ideas, and if I go knight d7, I'm like really weakening this. So I'm just gonna f5. There's this, so that's nothing. D6 really allows this, which is why my opponent is so hesitant to play this move. 
But there might still be E6. But now this gives me another target. Like I can take maybe? Or there's also bishop g7, but let's let's go here. I'm completely a lot okay opening up my king like this. Uh as long as there's no checks and there aren't, my king kind of protects everything. So the second one of the pawns comes forward, I now have a target. Um <laughs> not making this easy okay takes this is still protected queen f6 or maybe rook e7 do we want to blockade or what do we want because if we play queen f6 e7 we blockade f5 hangs a queen so that's no good let's go rook e7 scary 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 position Scary. If I take, then I lose a guard here. So takes, takes doesn't work. I've got to play, I think, queen f6. Now I have kind of my nice defensive configuration. Also, I can threaten a quick mate. That never hurt anybody. Just threaten mate. <laughs> That's in the middle of all this. It's actually white who's getting mated, even though the avalanche looks like it's falling in my direction. Uh, now queen f6 and bishop g7, and we sort of just... You know, we do something like this. And now, maybe we trade queens. And if we can trade queens, we should be okay. This pawn can be ours pretty soon. Even if they play rook e1. Yeah, I figured this was going to happen. Um, rook e6 takes takes. Yep, there it is. We should be in good shape. Question is, which pawn do we give up? It, Man, I... I think we give up this pawn. We give up the, the B and A pawns, but I I actually I prefer this just because I don't lose those pawns. Like I, it, it's probably just a draw. Actually, objectively speaking, this position is mo most likely a draw. That doesn't mean we can't. God, I mean these guys are playing ridiculous chess today. I mean A four, I didn't even see. <laughs> it's crazy. My opponent has offered me a draw. Wow. I mean, A4 is crazy stuff. Yeah, wow. Part of me wants to accept the draw. Part of me wants to still set a few practical problems for my opponent. But how? I mean, if he takes this pawn, he's going to win the other pawn too. No, it'd be silly to play on. I'll accept the draw. That was a solid game by my opponent. That was well done. Um, very, very, very poor, actually, by me. Uh, because this is just a winning position for black. This is a completely winning position. Uh, queen takes f5 was a terrible move. So, trading the queens and getting to that endgame was just horrible. It was, uh, I, 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 I don't even, I got so excited to do it, I, it didn't even occur to me that rook g5 was possible. Like, it did not even occur. That this move was like a, a thing. I just thought, oh, easy. That's it. I take e6. So I should keep the tension here. I should keep the tension with this, and I should play rook e6. That is apparently what I should play. Rook takes. There is the... Oh, rook e6 is so... That's what I mean. I mean, it's late in the episode, and I'm playing really stupid moves. Um, the opening was really interesting. Um, somewhere here, we could have... Uh... Oh, wow. I mean, I... wow, 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 wow. We were winning on, like, move 12. Oh, this is so bad, guys. Oh, my God. Look at this tactic. This is the beauty of the dark squares. White is just winning here. I, I thought I had to protect against this, but here there is just bishop h6, and the knight can't move because d2 is made. Oh my god, guys. Oh, this is so bad. What are we doing? Okay, let's play like one good game. It's just... what This, this is how to win a chess. I mean, come on. Okay. Final game of the episode. Let's play e4. Let's win a nice game. And um, let's do this. Let's go with Vienna. Let's end strong. This is the highest rated player we've played. This person has a rating that's like pretty similar to mine. It's been a while since we've played a Vienna, admittedly. Um, 
You you know you know what I might do? Hmm. I'm thinking to play some Gambit. Let's just play D3. This is uh this is our favorite opening. And we go for F4. Knight A5. Okay, so let's play Queen F3. Knight A5 is a very good move. This is the main line, actually. Trying to get my bishop. We can take and damage our structure, but we're going to get a very quick development. Long castle. I'm getting some text messages here. What's going on? Go here. <clears throat> Vienna is the OG Gotham course. The E4 course with the white pieces. I made this course... Like, late 2019. Before anything. Before anybody knew who Gotham was. Before I knew who Gotham was. Um, opponent is deep in thought here. So let's go... Maybe H3. I'm going to prevent anything from going here. And there's another idea in these positions that when Black Castle's short, I can actually, like, <laughs> I can just create an attack. So because I've traded my, li my light squared bishop so early, everything's going to go in a light square, except this pawn. So I said everything is going to go in a light square. We're going to make a really annoying structure for my opponent to break out of. Uh, a structure that will require some very thorough maneuvering. Very thorough. So... It's just like you have to go back to go forward in these kinds of positions. But a good player will figure it out. Sometimes when I play GMs and I play this system, they just play a bunch of normal looking moves and then the game is over. So here's G4. This is this is this is our whole our whole thing here. We play G4. Uh, black should play C6 D5. That 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 is the way black should usually create counterplay in these positions. Uh, I am hoping that my opponent sees my play coming and completely freaks out and does something totally ridiculous. Uh, of course, instead of g4, there's bishop b2, e3, long castle. There is also a5, a4 to attack the integrity of our structure. Generally, I meet a5 with a4. like Just like last game, h4, h5, or was that two games ago, last game? Um... There's knight d7, so we've talked about this, this kind of idea. Uh, queen g3 is an idea. Bishop e3 is an idea. I think bishop e3 is fine. I also like this. I like this because I kind of want to go f4, but that would result in a, in, a, in a queen loss if I did it right now. So probably bishop b2 or e3 and then long castle and then f4. So. Yeah, imagine losing a game like this. Oof. He plays it anyway, because he just wants to let me know that he, he, he sees what I want. Uh, queen e3, maybe. Just to be like, bro, I don't know why you put your bishop there. Or queen g2, or queen e3. Queen d3 runs into... Oh, queen d3 runs into this. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. I don't know about that move. That I don't think that's completely necessary. I'll go here. I want to prevent the knight from rerouting. Maybe we'll take it, or we'll just long castle and open up the, the file. The reason I don't, I'm not super thrilled about this with for black is that I can now just I have a target now. Like I I didn't have a target on h7. I don't know why you had to go h6. It's called a hook. You gave me a hook. Bishop g5. Maybe f4. Now. <laughs> Maybe not f4 because 
Can you chill for a second? If I long castle and I allow this damaging of my structure, I, I, I don't know if my attack is kind of cooling off there for a bit. I could just bring my queen back. That also is an option. Something like queen f3. Just to take the bishop with the queen before we play moves like h4, etc. So we castle long. Maybe we go for h4. The whole point of h6 was to play bishop back to g5. Queen f6, wow. You guys are really intent on trading. No, queen g3. I don't want to trade. And then you go back, I'm going to go back too. We're going to have a dance. Actually, if you go here and then here, you're just going to go back. Oh my god, these people. Okay, we take. You're going to trade again? Is this what this guy wants? Can you leave me alone? What have I done to deserve these trades? Not nice. I'm just gonna kill the fun from my position. Don't do that. Don't trade with me. But if you don't trade, I'm gonna play F3H4. So maybe you should trade. I put all my pawns on light squares, which means that if my opponent plays on the dark squares, then, you know, then they're happy. I'm tired. But I hope this is, like, therapeutic, you know? I mean, if you're watching this in the one, one hour, <laughs> one hour and 26th minute, then, uh, you know, it's okay. You can forgive me. So here comes H4. H4 is coming. You can forgive me. This is like, at this point, it's, you know, everybody kind of left the stage and everything. Oh, food. Rook d8. Weird move. Why rook d8? Now I'm going to play h4. Now I feel like I've actually made some progress. You did not trade queens with me, thankfully. So I feel like I've done something. Now you might ask, yes, can they take? Absolutely. Absolutely. But then queen f2. I'm going to win my pawn back basically instantly. Um, as I'm watching Firuja play Mami Diarov over on the right side of my screen. Uh, I'm also going to castle. I just haven't done that yet because I haven't really had the need to. I just felt like attacking first. Do a queen f2. And take this now black is not uh not it's not game over or anything i mean black black can absolutely continue to fight back uh -huh, interesting okay so rook takes h4 knight here i take but then king g7 yeah i mean the game the game is far from over far from over there's gonna be knight g6 rook h6 king g7 opponent might come and attack me on that side of the board. So I might win a pawn. I might win the h-pawn. This might be one of those moments it's better for black to give me the h-pawn but open the h-file for play than to hang on for dear life on the h-pawn. Like if black plays king g7 and dedicates the remaining part of this game to just defending that pawn, and that's what he does, not defending the pawn. And you know what? You know what? I'm not going to take it. I'm going to wait a little bit before I take it. And then if I'm going to give black the option to kind of awkwardly uncoordinate all their pieces i'm going to slowly 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 that that pawn is a big weakness and if i can win it in the right way it's game over but if i take and allow a huge counter attack to come down that side of the board i'm not going to be so happy so knight takes f4 queen takes f4 and now i was just going to go knight back to e2 which forces the queen back to f6 and black has not really solved this problem actually because now i have queen e3 but here comes king g7. And again, you see what I'm doing? I'm just applying nagging pressure throughout this game. Now rook h1. So I have all three of my major pieces doing a coordinated task, which is not easy to do. Uh, and now I need, the t I need, I need to tip, tip it over. How do I tip it over? Let's play king b2 to get out of the way of any 
anything over here, so we just put our king out of the way. I don't want to play f4 because that weakens this, but f4 could tactically work. I just have to find how. Knight g3, knight f5 is another idea. Moving the rook back and knight g3, knight h5 is another idea. And also just doing absolutely nothing. Just applying as much pressure as possible for as long as possible. Okay, that's a, that's, that's, that's a thing. We've talked about this. a4. Don't let my opponent have any fun. We have a very nice permanent bind on the position as the opponent's time just ticks lower and lower. b6, yes. I want to go rook g1 and maybe g5. But I don't want to rush. So how about this? And I'm baiting queen f4. Queen f4 looks like you can finally play this move. But in reality, you cannot because I will just come back and win it. Rook h1. So the pressure is tremendous. I mean, we just have like an unbelievably strong position. But how do we tip the balance? Maybe what we do is we play rook here defending this, triple on the h file, and play for g5. Maybe that's how we do it. But something will happen in that time. I think black will not just let us sit there. There's also g5 straight up, but I, I, don't, I don't know if g5 is that good of a move. Okay. That loses this. However, then this is hanging. Luck or genius? Luck or genius? Maybe g5 first. Take rook g5. King back to f8. Rook takes h8. Queen takes h8. And then queen takes b6. But then the queen is still open for counterplay. I don't like that. So I'm going to continue with our plan. I'm defending this and I'm threatening that. Oh. That doesn't look good. So now all pawn breaks are gone. Black has completely locked the structure, which means that the remainder of this game is all us. We could do whenever we want and however we want. And there is nothing Black can do about it. So... Yeah, I mean, once you concede all pawn breaks, you will lose. It's just that the, you, 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 you just cannot sit and defend this position forever. You will run out of moves. Uh, if I never have to worry about anything, I can do anything I want. So I'm thinking... Knight f5 is a huge possibility. G oh, g5 hangs a rook. You see, it's never too late to do something stupid. I think this is strong. I think this is strong. And then I can play something like queen e4. I don't know what there's to think about. You have to go here. You have to go there. There's, there's no moves. Queen e4. And then there's still no pawn break. So I, I completely shut down this. I will play this at some point, but not yet. But now I have g5. And now, now we just... I could have maybe played that last move as well, but... Yeah, now, now we just, we, we, we walk into the position. So a nice, patient game. And finally, we are ready to take on h6, which we could have taken a long time ago. But I, I feel like the way we won this last one was pretty instructive. Patience, patience, patience. Progressive improvement on a position. And uh, we're going to get the win. We're going to get the win. So a nice way to finish. That was good. Um, long episode, but friendly reminder. 40% off Black Friday sale. Uh, I'm going to get some food before I like fall asleep. I'm wow. But very tough episode. A lot of tough games. Almost lost the game that we ended up winning. Um, and uh, yeah, got a draw there. Draw there where we, uh, we had a good position. But the guy fought back. So hope you enjoy. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments below. You got to tell me what your favorite type of vegetable is. Uh, it's so nerdy. Anyway, see you in the next one.